Hello everybody, today we're going to be finding the area under a curve using the z-scores. Okay, so I'm going to give you a brief little introduction about kind of what we're doing here. So we have this normal curve, and I know the average, and I know the standard deviation. Okay, so the average goes in the middle, and here's this x value. This is just one point in this data set, and I'm interested in finding this, this portion to the right of this x interested in finding this portion of x. Okay, so let's just do a little reminder. Since this is a probability distribution, we know that the area under this whole curve is 1. We know everything is 1. Okay, that we know already. So I'm asking to find this area here to the right of that, this portion here. Okay, so if this portion, if this area right here is a portion of the whole, then we know that this little area is going to be less than 1. Okay? Because if the whole thing's one and I'm finding part of one, then that must mean this area is less than one. Okay, so how can we look at this area? Okay, what's another way that we could think about this? And and what I could say is, what's if I just picked one person randomly? If I just picked one x, picked one x value, I could ask you, what's the chance that it falls over here? What's the chance that it falls somewhere over here, to the right of here? Okay, so the chance of that happening is the area under this curve. So we could also look at this area as probability. So we could look at this area under the curve. We could find this area, or we could call this probability. Okay, so those are the two things. So there's two ways to do this. We could find it using a table or the calc. For this video, I'm going to be using the table. And usually these tables are in the back of the book, and it's actually called a z-table, okay, because they're z-scores. Okay, so let's start off with an example. So let's go ahead and say that we have a normal curve, and we know that the mean is 80, and the standard deviation is 3. Okay, so let me draw a visual representation of that, which is a normal curve. Make sure you're practicing your normal curves. And I could say um, x is equal to, let's say, 80 say 84 okay so 84 so if I come over to 84 here's 84 right here and we know 84 is a little bit more than one standard deviation but I want to find the chance of picking an 84 greater than this okay so I'm looking for this area and the way we denote that is I could say what's the probability or the area of getting an X greater than 84 so the first thing I have to do is standardize this value. I have to standardize this value. Okay, because everything could be made into a z-score. So I have to find the z-score. And the z-score is the actual value minus the mean divided by how much error we have, how much is standard deviation. This is going to be 4 over 3, which will be 1.33. Continue. Okay, so now... We're really just finding the probability that z is greater than 1.33. Okay, and what this would look like under a curve is it's basically the same exact thing. It's the same exact thing, but these are z's, these are x's. This would be 0, this is 1.33. This little section here that I'm coloring in is the same as this little section here means the same exact thing. I'm just standardizing it to make it a little easier. Okay, so here's your chart. Now if you look at this chart, um, here's your mean right here and our x values over here. That's why I picked this one because my x values to the right of the mean. And if you look, they're actually looking for the area. They're giving you the area to the left. They're giving you the area to the left. This is what we want. This is what they give. That's what all these values in here are. All these values are just area to the left of your z. Okay? And this is a 0. This is the standard normal table. So we have 1.33, which is good, because this table gives you the 1s and the 10ths. And this, this side here gives you the 100ths. Gives you the 100ths. So we're looking for 1.33, 1.33. So I'm looking here. Now I scan over to my hundreds, which is 3. And I just scan down. And I get 0 
9082. And remember I said that, that they just gave me the left side. They just gave me this side, but I'm interested in this side. So to find that, you just find the complement of that. These two things have to add up to be 1. They have to be add up to be 1. So I'm actually saying, what value is this that gives me 1? So all I have to do is subtract this to the other side. Subtract this to the other side using algebra. And we get 1 minus 0 0.9082, which is equal to 0 0.0. 918 okay so that's the area right there okay let's go ahead and do another one but we're going to look at the other side okay so here let me give you a normal curve and I'll switch the numbers around a little bit I'll say the average is 10 and the standard deviation is 2 and we're talking about populations here we're talking about mu's sigma so this is 10 and we'll just do a quick empirical rule just to kind of remind you that would be 12 two standard deviations is 14 okay so I just did a quick empirical rule and let's say say I want to find the probability that the X is less than let's say 5 okay so the first thing we have to do is kind of map it out now my 5 is right here correct my 5 is below. My 5 is below the mean. Okay? So what I have to do is I have to standardize this. I need to find the z score. So it's going to be 5 minus 10 divided by 2. So that's going to give me negative 5 over 2, okay, which is just negative 2.5. Negative 2.5 standard deviations away. So now I'm just finding the area that C is less than negative 2.5. These two things are equivalent. These two things are exactly the same. Okay, so now that I have my z-score, I just come to my table, and I'm looking for negative 2.5. Scan down, negative 2.5 right here. So this is it right here. So I went down a little bit. And my hundredths is zero. So that's going to be my hundredths. So this is the guy that I'm looking for. So this is going to be 0 0.0062. 0 0.0062. That's the probability of getting somebody less than 5, which makes sense because it's pretty far away from the 5. Okay, so let's look at the last, the last example, which is the, probably the most trickiest to do. So I'm going to say, let's go ahead and keep the same distribution. And let's say I'm interested in... Um, um, what, what happens if what's the probability that X will fall between 7 and let's use 11 7 and 11 okay so let's do a visual representation I always draw the graphs so I can see what I'm doing so the middle is 10 so 7 is over here and 11 is over here let me make that a little closer 11 right here so draw lines up, draw a line up. What I'm asking you is what's the chance that we get that we randomly pull that we randomly pull a number and it's in between seven and eleven. So this is how we have to do this. We have to find the both z score. So I'm gonna call that z score one, which I'll start with the seven. So it'll be seven minus ten divided by two, which is negative one point five. So that's my first z. C2 equals 11 minus 10 divided by 2, which is equal to a half, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay, so these are my new, new z-scores. Now, now if you notice this, let me, let me go ahead and show you something. If I find the z-score for negative 11, here, I'll, I'll go ahead and do it in z-scores. So this is what I'm actually looking at. So here's 0. Here's 0 0.5, and here is negative 1.5. So I'm looking for this area in here. Let me change the color. I'm looking for this area in here. Well, if you notice, if I use my chart, if I use my chart, this thing's going to find all of 
this. I use my chart. I use that whole chart. So let's go ahead and find that. Let's go ahead and find this first. So the area to the left of 0.5, okay, that would be on my other chart. So I'm going to flip back and I'm looking for the area to the left of 0.5. If you notice, the reason I'm using this chart is because my, the reason I'm using this chart is because look, this data point falls to the right of the mean. So that, that would be a positive z-score, see, to the right of the mean. So that's going to be a positive z-score. So let's look for point, here's a half. And here's point zero, so it's this one right here, point six nine one five. So z of, let me make it a little different color, z of point five equals point six nine one five. Six nine one five. That's this. That's that shaded area all the way to the left. All the way to the left. But if you notice, I don't want the area all the way to the left. I want this area right here. So I don't want this little section right here. And how can I get this section? I could get this section by finding the area to the left of this 0.5. So, so let me watch. I got these backwards. That's Z2. So watch. I'm going to find Z1, which is of negative 1.5. Okay, and that would be this chart. That would be this chart. So let's look for negative 1.5. There's negative 1.5. It's zero here, so this is my score right here, which is 0 0.0668. This is this little shaded region right here. That's this shaded region. But if you notice, I don't want this region. Okay, so all I need to do is subtract this region out. I want to get rid of this region. See, watch. I want to get rid of this region. Well, how much was that region? That region was 6%. This represented, uh, you know, almost 7%. So to find this area, to find the probability that x will lie between these two values, all I have to do is find the big area and subtract out the smaller area. This is usually the one that Trip, tricks people up the most. Okay, so this is 0 0.6915 minus 0 0.0668. And I get 0 0.6247. Okay, so that's my final answer. So I did the three examples that they give the most. Okay, and I put them all in X's. I changed from X's to Z's. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching. Make sure you watch this a few times to really understand how to go from X's to Z's and then Z's to find your percents. Have a nice day.